This is a modern fable of the big city. It's about a swinging bachelor with a problem. His boss. I'm sorry, Peter. I believe in married executive. No marriage, no promotion. He shared this problem with his friend, a hat check girl. Too bad you can't do what I do to protect myself in this place. What's that? Pretend you're married. And did she give him an idea? Yeah. Greta, you have given me the solution to my problem. A make-believe wife. That's the answer for my boss. Peter, you must be out of your mind. No, Greta, I mean it. I want you to be my wife. Occasionally. So she went on salary as his occasional wife. And they set up housekeeping. Peter in his apartment on the seventh floor, and Greta in her apartment on the ninth floor. To the lasting confusion of the fellow in between. your mother. Oh, uh, what can I do for you, Mom? What can anybody do? What's that mean? Oh, nothing, dear, nothing. I, I just thought I'd like to spend a little time with you and Greta while I can. Well, that'll be fine, Ma, just fine. So I'll be over in half an hour. Oh, uh, not tonight, Ma. We have a, a business dinner to go to. Oh, well, I'll come early and see you before you go, and then I'll stay and see you later. And in between, I, I'll wait. The mother can wait. Why not tomorrow, Mother? late for what? Uh, I might be asphyxiated. Uh, it's the fumes, Peter. The painters have been here all day. The place is a mess. All right, Mother, come on over. We'll have a ball. <laughs> that was... Your mother. I can hardly wait to meet her. Only for his mother would a man make this kind of sacrifice. Hmm? Well, I think it's kind of rotten. But you'll do it, huh? You wait for my call? Well, I'll do it, but I won't like myself. Come on. when you need a wife for business. But it's all part of the whole thing. Don't you understand, Greta? Mother, mother loves you. I just can't. I just can't break another date with Bernie. Well, I wasn't exactly spending a quiet evening alone myself. Look, Peter, I've already broken a dozen dates with him. Good, now you can find out if he's superstitious about 13. Peter. Thanks, love. Hurry now. <laughs> I was. I just got to meet this mother of yours. Not that I don't trust you or anything. Okay, but just uh, one fast look and then you go. And then you'll call me right away. Yes, I'll call you right away. Mm. Uh, the mother. How do you do? Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, we don't want any. That was? Avon calling. Looks more like Avon kissing. Oh, just a demonstration, mother. Uh, new kiss-proof lipstick. Gonna get some for Greta. Don't bother. It doesn't work. You're going? I'm staying. Oh. <laughs> It didn't take long for Peter to realize the hat wasn't his mother's shopping bag. The fumes. You wouldn't believe the fumes. I'd uh, believe the fumes. They're unbelievable. Mom, you know, since uh, you brought a few things with you, maybe you'd be more comfortable at a hotel. A hotel? Yes, you know, gracious living, expert service. Cold rooms, bunch of strangers. <laughs> Ma, you certainly have a picturesque way of putting things, but I just thought you'd be more comfortable at a hotel. I guess when you're old and not needed anymore. Oh, Mom, nobody said you're not needed. Peter, I hope you never grow old. If you don't mind the couch, you can stay here. We'd love to have you. 
Oh, but I don't want to be any trouble. Even for one night. Yeah, you see, Mother doesn't want to be any trouble, even for one night. <laughs> Mom, I think you're right. A hotel with a... Oh, you're right. What do I need? Four walls, a place to lie down, any cold no, hotel it's room. out of the question. Well, You'll stay here. Oh, such a sweet girl, a considerate person. Yes, a sweet, considerate person. That's why I married her. Oh, you two must hurry or you'll be late for your dinner engagement. Dinner engagement? Yes, that, uh business dinner we have with the advertising agency people? You go have your fun. <laughs> uh, business, Mother. Business, whatever. I don't want to get in the way of your pleasure. But you won't. No, 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 dear. I won't. I'm not one of those mothers. Now, I insist, I insist, and have a good time. Which was obviously a direct order from a superior officer. So, they went out and had a good time. Ew. What are you complaining about? What do you mean? Because I haven't actually come down with a case of hydrophobia? All right, so the place isn't exactly the Aster. It isn't even Stalag 17. You've got a nerve to complain. We wouldn't be here at all if you hadn't gotten all emotional. I'm fighting Mother to stay. It just seemed the right thing to do. Mm. I didn't know there was a restaurant left where you could get spaghetti for 55 cents. That's with meatballs. It's only 35 without. But you have whatever you want. Gee, Diamond Jim, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Fettuccine for everyone. <laughs> and that's about the way it went. The way it went at home wasn't much better. Hello? Who? Bunny. Oh, he must have the wrong number. This is his mother, Bunny. Hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I'm happy to say he's feeling fine. He's gone out to dinner with his wife. Yes. Oh, there's no mistake, Bunny. Mr. Christopher is a happily married man. Who's this? Uh, this, uh, that's Francine. Uh, just a little something left over from my bachelor days. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just keep it. Till I can get to the incinerator. Well, if that'll make you feel any better. It'll make me feel better. Oh, Peter. Another girl called tonight. Bunny. Oh? Another leftover? Yes, yes. But I told her you were out with your wife. Thanks, Ma. I really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, Peter. Now that you're married, you don't have to prove anything, you know? Good night, Mom. Good night, dear. <sighs> Took you so long? That mother. Oh, she's ruining my social life. Well, mine isn't exactly booming. Look, she gets up early, so you better set your alarm and get down here by six. Six? I haven't gotten up at six since I was four months old. Well, I'm sorry. That's the best I can do. And remember, our deal clearly says that... Good night, Peter. I'll see you at the window. Straight up, Kimmis. Thank you for a lovely evening. Anytime, anytime. And thus did peace descend. For a moment. What is it, Mother? Could I use the bathroom? Use the bathroom? Uh, yes, of, uh, of course, Mom. Uh, but just a minute. Greta's in there. Darling, Mother wants to get in there. All right, I'll tell her. Just a minute, Mom. <laughs> Mother wants to use the bathroom. Mine? No, mine. It's okay with me. She'll notice you're not there. She's terribly perceptive. The things I do for money, don't we all? Sorry, Mom. I uh, didn't mean to take so long. Uh, I'll hurry. You didn't tell me she was going to take a bath. Well, she's a small woman. How long did she take? Mother, 
Do you always keep the refrigerator turned up to three? Yes, Mother, we do. Even overnight? Especially overnight. Oh. Well, but don't you worry about the frost? Well, we try not to. Night. Night. Oh. Did you say something? Yeah, this is ridiculous. Well, I'll be glad to go back up to my apartment. But I won't be dragged down that fire escape in the middle of the night for anything. Okay, go. No, stay. But I like Peter, a man with a flexible mind. Come see. It's all right. Good. Night. Night. Peter. Mm hmm. You really should turn the refrigerator down. Three's much too cold. Unfortunately, this was a situation a married bachelor just had to suffer through. Well, let me put it this way. It wasn't the most restful night they ever spent. <laughs> Next morning, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, the ideal young couple made ready to face the glorious day. Come on. Better, better. Better wake up. Oh, Come on, get it. Come on. Gotta get up. Let's go. Come on, you can do it. Well, you I know can you do can do it. it. There you go. One foot in front of the other foot. There, see, you can do it. Okay, go get him. Here you go. Good morning, Greta. Morning, Mother. Just giving the floor a little scrub. Oh, floor? It, it seemed as if it had a, a thin film on it. Oh, thank you. If you'd like later, I'll help you with the walls. Well, of course, I don't want to interfere. Oh, no, no. Please, feel free. I guess you want to start getting your husband's breakfast ready. Come on. Let's get out of your way. There. Now, tell me, what's Peter been having for breakfast? Uh, eggs. Fried eggs. Eggs? Good morning, Mother. Oh, good morning, Peter. Good morning, Greta. Good morning, dear. Your eggs will be ready in a minute. Nah, no eggs. Hate eggs. Uh, no, you don't. Unless they're scrambled by you. Fried. Right. Well, actually, I don't have time today for breakfast anyway. So I think I'll just leave you girls to your own devices. I'm going to help Greta with the walls. Good. She doesn't mind. Of course, I don't want to meddle. Oh, meddle, meddle. She can use the help. Lovely girl, but not the best housekeeper. Well, she just has her own way of doing things. I'm young yet. Now I'll learn. Well, bye, dear. <laughs> Hello. Hello, dear. Don't you fear me, you <laughs> darling. I hate you. <sighs> Mother's still there, huh? I honestly thought she'd be gone by now. Oh, no, no, no. We're still cleaning your apartment. Boy, is it filthy, and am I humiliated. Peter, she thinks it's my fault. You're a terrible housekeeper. Wonderful, darling. She says she's only going to stay for one night. She'll leave as soon as you've gotten the place spotlessly clean. Mm-hmm. And if that doesn't work... Well, I guess I'll just be stuck with a clean place. Bye. Bye. It seems like Peter expects to come home tonight to a clean and empty apartment. Well, clean it may be, but empty it's not. Life is like a candle. The wax gets soft. The wick is trimmed. But still, the flame grows weak. One little flicker. Then, poof. Poof. Hasn't flicked an eyelid. Oh, don't worry, she'll leave soon. You said that an hour ago. Well, how did I know it was going to be such a good movie? And what are we supposed to do in the meantime? Well, while you're at it, you can wash the dishes. She's glued. Just glued to that set. Well, Greta, it stands to reason. Sooner or later... Well, you say it stands to reason, but the fact is that I have heard the national anthem three times and also three non-denominational spiritual messages. Well, sooner or later, they all get weary. Sooner or later, it'll be morning. Yeah. What's happening? Water Baxter's beating up Wallace Beery. In the last movie, John Wayne beat up Wallace Beery. Well, that's tough business. Yeah. That gives me a great idea. What's that? Let's have a big fight. Nobody likes to stick around while a couple's fighting. I don't know, I don't know. The computer, it's a great idea. Uh, Mother'd get all upset. I got the idea. All right, what? Let's act lovey-dovey. Then she can't stick around. I have a better idea. Yeah? Let's not. Well, I've tried. Yes, you did. Peter, as nice and as well-meaning as your mother is, 
I just cannot stay here like this another night. She was supposed to go. Yes, yes, I know. You've been swell to her, and I appreciate it. But there is a limit. She's got to go. Right. Mom? I'm a grown man now. I remember when you were a little baby. Yes, well, that's sort of the point. You see, I'm not a little baby anymore. I'm a grown man now. This big. With a wife. Very attractive. Uh, we're just starting out together. It's uh, almost as if we were still on our honeymoon, if you know what I mean. Ma, are you listening to me? Well, don't I always? Well, yeah, but uh, you see, it's just as psychologically speaking, it's very important for a young couple to be alone at a time like this. Oh, by yourselves alone? Well, yes. Oh, you're right, Peter. You're absolutely right. Good. Who knows how much time we may have? Life is but a candle. The flame slowly glows and flickers and poof. Mom, what are you talking about? Oh, nothing, nothing, dear. I'll go. But first, there are a few things that you should have. What's that? The key to the safe deposit box. And uh, here's my bank book. It should cover everything. The, the details are already arranged. Oh, here's a letter of instruction. Now, dear, the lawyer is a good man. He's honest. But watch him. Mother. But dear, it was Dr. Harley. I went to Dr. Harley yesterday, and he made tests, and then he made extra tests. And, well, dear, I just... I just couldn't bring myself to tell you yesterday. You mean all... All that about the fumes? The smoke screen, dear. I'm not having my place painted. Why bother? Well, Ma, I mean, are, are, you, are you sure? I mean, remember those other times. Peter, when the time comes, a mother knows. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> Dear, dear, my trading stamps. Oh, Ma! When a woman gives away her trading stamps, it's really time to start worrying. She's fine. There's uh, nothing wrong with her, huh? Your mother has one chronic disease, galloping hypochondria. Well, how about those extra tests? Routine. The results came in this morning. They're all negative. Good. Recognize her? Mother? Hmm. -mm. One of the biggest stars of stage and screen. Not television? She won't do television. How do you feel? Oh, fine, fine. Hmm? You sure? Yes, positive. Hmm. She'd be great on television. But, Ma, I just came from the doctor. You're fine. Nice of you to say so, Peter. Ma, would I lie to you about something as important as this? A good son like you with your upbringing? Of course. Father, you are well. Such a sweet girl. Hello, Dr. Harley. This is Peter Christopher. Would you do me a favor and speak to my mother and tell her the brutal facts? Thank you. No, Peter, please, let me go in peace. No, absolutely not. Hello, Doctor. Thank you, dear, for everything. Oh, it was our pleasure. Come again soon. Oh, and I'll get to see my grandchildren after all. <laughs> yeah, those little rascals to me. <laughs> well, I'll just carry your bag down to a cab. Oh, maybe you could drop me off. I've got a lesson. What's the matter? It's for it. It's hot. He's getting a fever. A fever? Nonsense. I feel fine, Mom. Quiet. A mother's lips never lie. Now, dear, don't you worry. I won't abandon you while he's sick. Well, I'm sure I can handle anything that mm. right. Oh, but dear, you have your career, your lessons. Life must go on. Why, I'd never forgive myself mm. if I left you now. Oh, no, he looks all right to me. Look. Sick? Frick, sick. <laughs> going to do? I'll get well as soon as I can. 
Oh, it does look pretty grim. I'm sure that's how I got this cold. Oh, well, what if I get one? We'll jump off that bridge when we come to it. This is it. Oh, did you turn down the refrigerator? Good night, Greta. Good night, Good night, kids. Here's our night. And a cheery good morning to you, my dear. Ah, oh, Peter, good morning indeed. You rested well, I trust? You trust right. All symptoms gone, all systems go? A okay on both. Good. Now then, hands washed? Mm-hmm. Teeth brushed? Yes. Slippers on? Yes. And let's go. breakfast for two, my dear. Peter, how nice. You've earned it. Not at all. <clears throat> for her unfailing good humor in the face of difficult mothers-in-law, let it be known that Greta Patterson has earned one Peter Christopher special breakfast with all the trimmings. That's really nice. But I must say, as a mother-in-law, your mother's really not so bad. You're only saying that because she's really not your mother-in-law. Maybe, but she's a very good cleaner, duster, mopper, and cooker. Gee, I didn't know you felt that way. You know, I think I'll call her up and invite her over for the weekend. Boy, is this fancy. Guess you didn't hear me. I said, I think I'll call... I heard you. Right, right. Well, what say we start breakfast off with a glass of champagne? Champagne for breakfast? Well, you're supposed to start the day off with a glass of fruit juice, aren't you? Yes. And champagne's made from grapes, isn't it? I never thought of it that way. Grape juice. I owe it to my health. May I propose a toast? Why not? Two mothers and mothers-in-law who should be free to visit their children. <laughs> Occasionally. Hmm.